deaths in Naruto. There's not a whole lot of them, and I'm sure you can remember all of the important ones because, well, they hit hard. But there's also a lot of deaths that didn't hit hard, and that's not because we didn't care about the characters. It's just because we never saw these characters die. There is a very, very long list of important characters in Naruto, and a lot of them are dead. But realistically, in a show with this grand of scale, we're not going to get an intimate look into every single important character's death. But at least with these important characters, for the majority of them, we know how they die. Tobirama died fighting the Golden Silver Brothers. Sakamo Hatsuke killed himself. And while we didn't see either of these moments, I mean, I guess we saw Sakamo's body, we know what happened. And that's nice because they're very important characters, but one very important character doesn't get this treatment. I, of course, am talking about Hashirama. You see, Hashirama is dead, obviously. He got reincarnated a couple of times and you have to be dead for that to happen. But all we know about Hashirama's death is that it happened sometime before or during the first Great Shinobi World War. And the reason that doesn't sit well with anybody, besides the fact that Hashirama is one of the most important characters in the entirety of the story, is that nobody can think of how Hashirama would die. Without being told, nobody can really think of a conclusion thing that could have killed Hashirama. But there is theories, specifically five theories, one of which I subscribe to myself. In fact, one of these theories I subscribe to so highly, I'm pretty sure it's the right answer. But before we get into any of those theories, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. If you guys are feeling particularly generous today, go ahead and drop a follow on my other YouTube pages, NC Gamer 23 where instead of talking anime, I play video games, or Hammer's Collection, which has a brand new video up today that I'm about to show you a clip of. And one of these statues is coming home with me, and here's a little hint, it's one of the biggest ones in here. And then one of the newest things I've seen at Harmy Anime, obviously we have the Tangan in here using his sound breathing, but apparently Harmy Anime Anime custom makes display boxes to match the statues they sell. So if you were to buy, oh, I don't know, some gorgeous statues like this Saucery with his third Kazekage and his favorite puppet, or this Daedara riding on a C2 bird having Toby tag along, you could have a custom display case made with all of these beautiful lights. But now to get to my favorite statue in the entire store, we have Netero True 100 Hands. Look at the detail on this. So guys, if you want incredible, high quality, and well-priced statues like this, guys, Harmy Anime is the place to go. You can either go to their brick and mortar location in the Santa Anita Mall in Arcadia, California, or guys, you can go to one of their two websites where they sell these statues all across the world. But if you guys are trying to get your hands on these statues before anybody else, they have an Instagram where they post all their brand new statues in both their brick and mortar and their online stores. So Hashirama, the god of Shinobi, the creator of Konoha, how could he die? To somebody who's even consumed a minor amount of Naruto, it seems insane that a man this powerful could die from really anything. I mean, he was a senju, which means that his longevity was longer than the average human. He was said to have as much chakra as Naruto in the war arc in Jin Cloak mode. He single-handedly caught and then handed out all of the tailed beasts like candy to his enemies. And he not only defeated Kakuzo in a fight, he defeated Madara in a fight while he was riding Kurama. This man, for all intents and purposes, lives up to the title of the God of Shinobi. He was a perfect sage and the first person in history to use wood release. His wood release was so advanced he could make giant golems that could battle tailed beasts in fist-to-fist -fist fights, shoot wood dragons, or create entire forests. And if he had his sage mode activated, he could use an ability called True Thousand Hands, where he summons an entire Bodhisattva, AKA a Buddhist God made out of wood that he used to punch Susano armor off of Karama. Not to mention his deity gates were able to hold the 10 tails down. This is a man who had one person on earth who could kill him, Madara. And you know what he did? Well, he killed him. How on earth does that man die? And at a young age, mind you. You see, we know Hashirama died at a young age. How do we know this? Because he was reincarnated 
at a young age. Edo Tensai brings you back as you died. It even brings back the clothes you died in. I'm not kidding. Basically, however you left the world, you will come back. This is why Hanzo is wearing what he wore when Nagato killed him. This is why Hiruzen was brought back elderly. You are not brought back in your prime. The only person who was ever brought back in their prime was Madara. And that is canonically, this is not a theory, because Kabuto prepared his body and did extra work in Madara's Edo Tensai to bring him back in prime form. Kabuto says this to Madara, which makes Madara the only exception to the rule that you are brought back as you die. So the Hashirama we see reincarnated is how he died. And while the Senju do live longer lives than the average person, so he could be older than he looked, he still looked pretty good. So we're talking about a most likely peaked power Hashirama dying. This isn't a Hiruzen or a Donzo situation where they're so old, their power isn't what it used to be. He died in his peak, but that doesn't make any sense because he killed the only person even close to his level. And yet he died in battle. And when you consider the feats of Minato, who was able to go up against a thousand hidden stone shinobi all by himself, and Hashirama is stronger than Minato, you can't imagine any amount of fodder shinobi taking him out. The third Raikage, who isn't touching Hashirama, went up against 10,000 shinobi for three days straight, and he only died because he ran out of chakra. And while the Raikages are very powerful and have massive stores of chakra, this is Hashirama we're talking about, who looked at Naruto as he spread his nine tails chakra to the entirety of the shinobi alliance that was still alive later in the fourth grade shinobi world, and said, that's how much chakra I had when I was alive. Implying that Hashirama, while alive and in peak form, AKA the form he would have died in, had as much chakra as Naruto and Kurama combined. So fighting for three days is probably something Hashirama could do relatively easily, especially when you consider the fact that Madara is said to be able to use his Mangikyo Sharingan for 24 hours straight. And I can almost guarantee you that Hashirama has more chakra than Madara. Considering Ashura reincarnations are blessed with massive stores of chakra, while Indra reincarnations are blessed with dojutsus. But okay, we've set the stage for how incredible Hashirama is and how weird it is that he would die in combat. So let's jump into these five theories that exist. The first theory makes a lot of sense when you consider who Kishimoto is as a person. This theory states that Hashirama had a chakra disease. Just like Itachi and Kimimaru, Hashirama got the chakra bug that eventually nerfed him. And this is a possibility, even though it's never been mentioned and he's never shown any problem molding chakra, when both Itachi and Kimimaru were very frequently shown either coughing up blood or struggling to get their chakra going, it was like literally half of their plot was they're sick. Like I know they're really powerful, but don't worry about them because they got chakra problems. And we never, ever, ever saw that with Hashirama. But when you consider the way that Kishimoto gets rid of these very broken characters, Hashirama having a chakra disease kind of makes sense. Without a chakra disease, Kimimaru would have been nigh unstoppable. Both Gara and Rock Lee would have been dead. Orochimaru would have taken over his body, got the Shikatsum Yaku, mastered the Curse Mark level two, and basically just wiped Konoha. I mean, even with the chakra disease, Kimimaru survived a sand burial on the biggest scale we've ever seen. This is a reminder that Genin Gara is weaker than the Gara we see later on in the show, but Genin Gara is still low Kage level. Itachi without a chakra sickness probably would be Hokage right now. If Itachi was able to acquire an EMS with a perfect Susano that has a Yadamir and a Totsuka blade, literally nothing would have stopped him. Arguably, Madara and Obito are stronger than Itachi was at his strongest form. But if you gave Itachi EMS and a perfect Susano, that's a different conversation. So that's a perfect example of two very broken characters that were basically written off with a fake disease because well, we can't have them destroying the entire plot with their power. So could that have happened to Hashirama? It's a possibility. But at the same time, he does have an insane healing ability. Now, is that healing ability strong enough to defeat a chakra disease? We don't know. Because we never saw anybody with a chakra disease have Hashirama's cells attached to them. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea, though. Especially considering that Orochimaru had it. Why didn't you try that with Kimimaru? The second theory is actually my second favorite of the five theories. You see, what's unique about Hashirama? His gorgeous hair, the fact that he's Ashura's reincarnation, Nation, the fact he got to explore Madara's body every night, and wood release. The scale at which Hashirama could use wood release has never been replicated. And this is A, because it was his Keke Genkai, and B, because of his chakra reserves. But there's something very unique about wood release. You see, wood release is the only release that makes something living. 
Earth release moves rocks, fire release makes fire. That's all great, but none of these things are alive on a cellular level. Trees are. And this theory states that by creating organic matter that lives, wood release users are actually sapping their own life away. Essentially, it's a bit like the conservation of mass. In order to create living things, life has to be used. And when you think about how chakra works on a general level, this actually makes a little bit of sense. You see, we learned with Baryon mode that chakra can be turned into different forms of energy. When Kurama and Naruto collided their chakra into each other, they made a different form of energy that created Baryon mode. So with Baryon Mode as a point of reference, that's telling us that Chakra can turn into something else, like life or organic matter. And this is actually even more interesting if you think about how Wood Release works. You see, all other releases disappear when you're done casting them. If you cast the Fireball Jutsu, the Fireball doesn't exist forever, it dissipates. And while things like a Mud Wall may exist after you create them, they'll crumble with time. But the wood created using Wood Release never disappears. You build a tree or even a sapling, and that tree will still grow with time. Now, do these trees grow naturally like every other tree that grew through non-Jutsu means or do they grow through a continual and persistent tap from the user's chakra because after all it was the user's chakra that grew them in the first place so as a wood user creates more and more trees are they just creating more things that are sucking away their chakra and as they move further down their life these things begin to suck away all of their chakra until they have nothing left? Or if that theory is too crazy for you, think about how Baryon Mode works once again. The chakra that Naruto and Kurama collide into each other is destroyed and can never be recovered. Essentially, by making chakra into something new, you lose that chakra forever. So wouldn't it stand to reason that by making that chakra into something new in terms of organic matter, you would also lose that chakra forever? And once again, as a wood user uses more and more wood release throughout their life, creating this organic living matter do their chakra reserves lessen and lessen and lessen. Listen, Hashirama's chakra reserves aren't nothing to scoff at, but he made the forest that surrounds Konoha. And actually the creation of that forest helps this theory. You see, every piece of wood in Konoha, and this is specific to only Konoha, has seals on it. Look at any piece of B-roll of anybody walking through Konoha. Any part of a building that's created out of wood has seals on it. And from a distance, you might think, oh, these are just posters or trash or graffiti. But no, they're on top of buildings. They're on roofs. They're on support beams. They're everywhere. Why would the wood in Konoha need seals on it? Well, remember, who built Konoha? Hashirama. Using the wood from the forest, he grew. So the majority of Konoha is built out of Hashirama's jutsu. So why the seals? Well, there's two possible answers. And the two possible answers pertain to which theory you believe in. The first possible answer is that all of the wood that Hashirama creates continually taps his chakra and therefore always keeps growing. Therefore, the wood used to build buildings in Konoha would continually grow if they used the wood from Hashirama's forest. So they had to seal it with seals to stop the influx of chakra from Hashirama. And therefore, they wouldn't have to worry about their support beams becoming massive trees. The second theory is that Hashirama's energy exists in every tree he's ever made. That without them being sealed, people would be able to suck that chakra out and have Hashirama's chakra. Obviously, in one or two pieces of wood, this isn't a big deal, but if somebody went around Konoha and tapped the chakra from every piece of wood Hashirama ever created, there'd be a massive problem. Regardless to which theory you subscribe to, though, it still rounds back to the point that wood release slowly killed Hashirama. I mean, both Yamato and Donzo are exhausted when they have to do big releases of wood release. And this man made entire forests. The third theory is less interesting, though it is cool nonetheless. See, we've touched on the point that there's really only one person on Earth who could have killed Hashirama, and that was Madara. But Hashirama kills Madara in the final valley fight. But even though Hashirama won that fight, did he come out unscathed? You see, this third theory states that Hashirama was severely crippled in his final fight against Madara. Maybe a bone broke that never healed correctly, or his healing factor finally ran out, or something. And in this final fight against Madara, he lost a considerable amount of his 
combat power. It made him human, essentially. And this isn't the craziest theory of all time. If there's anybody on Earth who could do it, it would be Madara. Not to mention, we don't know Madara's Mungi Kyosharing gun ability. No, it's not looking into the future or something like that. It might be, but we don't know for sure. But whatever it is, you better be damn sure he would use it against Hashirama. And that MS ability could be anything from a Genjutsu to some Limbo clone variant that could have taken a lot of Hashirama's combat power away. And because Hashirama was significantly weakened, he died to a bunch of Shinobi in the first Great Shinobi World War. Not the craziest theory, but it's not that interesting. Now, the fourth theory is interesting. It also makes a good amount of sense. The fourth theory states, Black Zetsu killed Hashirama. You see, I like this theory for a couple of reasons. Black Zetsu is 2,000 years old. He snuck out of Kaguya when she was sealed. And his entire plan for his life was to get the Ten Tails reincarnated so Kaguya could come back. Obviously, in his plan to get the Ten Tails reincarnated, Indra reincarnates were his best friend, while Ashura reincarnates were his worst enemy. And while Indra reincarnates and Ashura reincarnates have been battling for thousands of years, that wasn't getting him any closer to the Ten Tails coming back. Because for the Ten Tails to come back, we need the Rinnegan, which would require that Indra and Ashura come together to make Hagoromo and therefore awaken the Rinnegan. Finally, now that Indra and Ashura had pseudo closed the cycle of hate, this was a possibility. And when Madara was defeated, Black Setsu had the perfect person to manipulate, but Madara was severely weakened. And there's also a guy out there who is strong enough to seal all of the tailed beasts. And also he's a Senju, which means he has an enlonged lifespan, so God knows how long he's gonna be around. And we've already seen Hashirama hold the ten tails down. So Black Setsu was absolutely correct to be afraid of him. That was a full power ten tails too. Hashirama could very easily hold the ghetto statue down. So Black Setsu identifying that this man who's probably gonna live to about 150 and has the ability to seal the ten tails is a big problem for the whole bring the ten tails back plan. So Black Setsu sabotages Hashirama during the first Great Shinobi World's War, which leads to Hashirama's death. And this isn't crazy. Black Zetsu is an amorphous blob that can jump from shadow to shadow totally stealthily. He's strong enough that when he binds to you, he could suppress 10 Tails Obito. And let's not forget that he literally punched through 10 Tails Madara. Yes, that was a surprise feat, but just being able to get your fist through Ten Tails Madara is pretty impressive. And also, him attacking Hashirama would also be a surprise feat. So, Black Zetsu saw an opportunity and he took it and he assassinated Hashirama. Or he set a series of events in motion that will put Hashirama in such a disadvantageous situation that he was killed in battle. It's in line with what Zetsu would want. It makes sense story-wise. It's a, it's a good theory. Not as good as the last theory. My favorite theory, the theory I subscribe to, and probably the correct theory. You see, Hashirama had an insane healing factor. We've talked about it already this video quite a lot. Essentially, literally any wound he sustained he would heal from. And we're not talking bumps and scratches. If you cut off his arm, he would grow a new one. I, I literally, I wish I was kidding. We know this because when Madara fought Tsunade, she activated her creation rebirth, also known as her strength of a hundred seal that allows her to heal from death a hundred times. Tsunade has pulled her body back together when it was cut in half and fixed herself using this jutsu. Sakura has regrown an entire arm, got donut holed by a Kurama tail, ran down it, and punched a dude through the chest. The regenerative abilities of creation rebirth are insane. The only thing that's even theorized to possibly be able to kill somebody using creation rebirth is if you destroy their head, which is where all the chakra is kept. But anything below the neck, you're fine. Ashram didn't have to activate strength of 100 or creation rebirth to get access to this healing ability. He had it all the time. Stab him in the heart while he's sleeping, it'll just heal. But that actually might be the issue. You see, creation rebirth is actually a forbidden jutsu. Why would a jutsu that heals you be forbidden? It's a good question. Cells can only mitotically divide so many times. And eventually, after dividing X amount of time, cells will signal for apoptosis. This is when a cell essentially unalives itself because it's identified that it's no longer useful to the body as a whole. The reason that creation rebirth is not allowed is because the use of it significantly shortens your lifespan. Because when you activate creation rebirth, you're increasing your mitotic regeneration so substantially that you're using up all of those mitotic regenerations. It's a bit like if you only had 500 heartbeats left. Going for a sprint is gonna shorten your life because your heartbeat's gonna increase. And this is exactly what happens with creation rebirth. But Madara compared creation rebirth to Hashirama's healing factor, which is 
always present, meaning that the entirety of Hashirama's life has been creation rebirth. And while obviously if Hashirama wasn't severely injured, it's not like his cells were going to be mitotically regenerating just anything, but Hashirama's entire life was battle. And not just any old battle, battle against Madara, where he surely lost fingers, hands, arms, legs, maybe even his torso once or twice. But every single time he was injured, even on a minor scale, Creation Rebirth was activated. But if you're not supposed to use Creation Rebirth because it's a forbidden jutsu that slowly kills you, what happens if you can't turn it off? Hashirama didn't have a choice in the matter. Anytime he was injured, even remotely, that forbidden jutsu was activated. And slowly but surely, his cells used up what was a finite amount of mitotic splits that they were allowed. And eventually one day, Hashirama just couldn't regenerate anymore. You see, an invincible man's gonna fight like an invincible man. Look at Bon from Seven Deadly Sins, or Hidan from Naruto. They're gonna use the fact that they can regenerate to fight you. They'll charge at you with no care in the world because, oh no, you just stabbed me in the stomach. That's fine, it's gonna heal. And this is most likely the way Hashirama fought as well. Technically, what did he have to worry about? His entire life, everything that's ever been cut on him grew back. So during the first great shinobi world war, he was fighting like an invincible man. But one day, he wasn't that anymore. And one day he had to learn what mortality was. This is truly the only way I can wrap my head around Hashirama dying. Either the fact that his cells could no longer split mitotically just killed him, or in battle, he just couldn't recover from the cuts he usually did and let out. Regardless of how he died though, it was tied in to his healing factor. And this theory makes sense when you consider the fact that nobody has a healing factor like Hashirama anymore. I mean, yeah, you can tap into it with creation rebirth, but once again, forbidden jutsu. And yeah, Naruto's got a pretty nuts healing factor, but that's largely tied into Kurama. What if healing factors such as Hashirama killed those who were born with them? And the only reason Hashirama made it as far into life as he did was his massive life force. See, being able to heal from anything is a blessing, but it's also a curse. And that curse is what killed Hashirama. But what do I know? Kishimoto won't give us any answers, so I gotta mix them up my own. If you guys liked my answer though, guys, please Please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and, well, you know, hit that noti bell. Listen, the only way I would want a healing factor is that if I also couldn't feel pain, because it's like, oh yeah, my arm grew back, but I still had to deal with getting my arm cut off.